Hi friends, good morning. We're gonna be um, starting our Bible lesson for today, talking about Easter this week. And today, it's kind of a heavy subject that we're talking about. Jesus gets arrested. He has his crucifixion and his burial, okay? So we're gonna talk about all three in one. I want you to think up until this time, the disciples and Jesus already had their last supper. Jesus told the disciples that one of them was gonna betray him, which they were all shocked and sad by hearing that. And they still didn't understand exactly what that meant. And more importantly, he already told them that he was gonna to have to die. And for this, because they didn't know the future, because they were only trying to take in the information Jesus was telling them at this time, it was hard for them. Could you imagine how that must feel? He, he had to die and, and they were hearing this. And he, up to now, he's been doing all these miracles, helping people, loving people. He changed the world as everybody knew it at this time, okay? From the moment he started healing and helping and loving and serving, he, he did so many amazing things. And, and up until that time, no one had been that way or done that. He was a friend to the people who the unloved people, the people who, the lepers, right? We've talked about that. Remember we did in the class where you guys were walking by each other and we were laughing and having a good time. But if you think about it, friends, that's probably a really lonely thing to go through, the people who had leprosy of that time. And Jesus kind of hung out with the misfits and the people who didn't, who weren't cool or the people who were had diseases or the people who were sick or the people who were dying. He raised people from the dead. This is, this is big things that he was doing. And then all of a sudden, he's telling his disciples that he has to die. And they're thinking, but why? They, they just can't understand it. They can't wrap their brain around it. So today, the story that we're going to be reading is found in the book of Mark and also Luke and also John. So in three out of the four gospel books, right? Um, I want to remind you guys that Jesus never sinned. The things that he did um, were, seemed wrong to some people. But if you think about it, there was nothing wrong about him helping others. There was nothing wrong about him loving others and serving others. And in, in this time, it was hard for people to see that someone was doing the right thing or doing a kind thing. They, they didn't want it. They weren't about it and they, and they didn't like it. So they needed a reason to, I guess, get him in trouble and, and to arrest him. And, and this is all stuff that God talked about earlier in the Bible. It was all prophecy that's starting to, to come true. So we're going to jump right in. I'm going to hold this up and I'm going to read to you what's going on at this time. Jesus had done many miracles and taught the truth about God. He told the people he was the Messiah, the son of God. Many of the Jewish leaders were very angry because they did not believe that Jesus was who he said he was. They were afraid that Jesus was gaining too many followers. This could mean they would lose their jobs, their popularity, their authority, and maybe even their country. Because they were afraid and angry, they looked for a way to kill Jesus. Judas, the disciple who turned against Jesus, had arranged for Jesus' arrest and said that he would signal who Jesus was by giving him a kiss. Judas then led a group of Jewish leaders and soldiers to the place where Jesus was praying with several of his disciples. He kissed Jesus and the soldiers grabbed Jesus to take him as their prisoner. One of the disciples had a sword with him. So he took out his sword and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his, this man's ear. Jesus touched the servant's ear and he healed him. Jesus saw the hearts of the Jewish leaders. Why are you treating me like a robber? He asked. I was with you every day in the temple teaching people about God, yet you never arrested me because... People were watching. You came here at night to arrest me. You have done what the holy men from long ago said you would do. After Jesus was led away, his disciples left him and all of them ran off. Then Jesus was taken to the high priest and to the Roman governor, governor Pontius Pilate. The Jewish leaders demanded that Jesus be crucified, which means put to death by hanging on a cross. They wanted Jesus killed, even though Jesus had done nothing wrong. Pontius Pilate allowed Roman soldiers to whip and beat Jesus. After this, the soldiers made Jesus wear a crown of thorns and a purple robe. 
They then made Jesus carry his cross until they forced another man to carry it for him. He was nailed to the cross at a place called Golgotha and hung between two other men. Roman guards stood nearby. When Jesus knew that his work on earth was done, he said, it is finished, and then he died. One of the soldiers cut Jesus aside with a spear, proving to those around him that Jesus was truly dead. Joseph of Arimathea, a disciple of Jesus, offered to bury Jesus in a new tomb. Joseph and Nicodemus, another follower of Jesus, brought spices and wrapped his body in graves, grave clothes to begin to prepare it for burial. Together, they laid Jesus in the tomb. All right, friends, I want to remind you about something. Now, when Adam and Eve sinned way long ago at the beginning of creation, at the beginning of, of everything that God created, at the beginning of our world, um, that's when sin entered the world, right? We re do you remember that? We learned about that like the first couple weeks of school. It was like one of the first Bible stories we did. And for hundreds of years, God had allowed people to give a burnt offering, a sacrifice, to sacrifice an animal in order to, uh, like for forgiveness, to ask for their forgiveness from God for their sin. Now, this didn't really permanently fix the problem of sin because they would still sin and then they would have to sacrifice an animal. But Jesus, we know Jesus and people call Jesus the ultimate sacrifice. And what that means is that he is the sacrifice of all sacrifices, okay? There is no better sacrifice. Nothing else can outdo what he did. What he did on the cross by dying for your sin and for my sin was the ultimate price that needed to be paid. And he did it. Now, when I think about it, and I've seen movies, and I get emotional when I think about it because I feel like you're, you're giving your life. That's such a huge decision to make. And he had a choice. He didn't have to do it. And he chose to go through with it. He chose to think of all of us, to think of you, to think of me, to think of my kids, to think of my family, even the people who aren't even born yet. Children and babies who haven't even been born yet, he prayed for them and he thought about them when he took this huge step of sacrificing himself for all of us. The moment that he died on that cross and he hung on that cross was the moment that sin was paid for in full. But that's the moment where we needed to ask for that free gift of salvation. All right, friends, Jesus knew also that he was going to rise again. So the story doesn't end here, but we need to wait and see what happens. Um, and this is basically the Easter story. So this is the time where it, it's sad because he died, right? And this is the time where a lot of people get emotional and they cry because it is a very sad part of the story. Jesus dies, but we do have hope. And, and that's coming later on this week. We're going to get to hear of the hope and what happens with the rest of the story. Some of you probably already know. I'm sure you do. And you might remember, but I'll get to talk to you about it in the next couple days. All right, friends, let me pray for you really quick. And then you can get the rest of your day going. Okay. All right. Bow your heads. Close your eyes. Dear Lord, we just come before you and thank you, Lord, for this day. And I just thank you specifically right now, God, for Jesus, for his life, for how brave he was to give up his life and how unselfish he was to think of everybody else in this world and, and go through with your plan of sacrificing himself just so that we all could be saved and have eternal life with him and with you in heaven someday. Thank you, Lord, for your grace, for your mercy, and just for being in control of everything in our lives. We love you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, friends. I love you. And I hope you have a beautiful rest of the day. We'll talk again soon. Bye.